everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We do have a few stories for today, although the brux of it's going to be focused on this little logo here, E3, because uh, we have to talk about E3 this year. It's obviously a bigger deal at our channel than maybe some others, uh, the news that came out anyways. Uh, before we do that, I want to remind you that, hey, uh, we're giving away $100 in cash to a lucky new subscriber this month. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We also are giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus as well. Uh, if you would like to enter to win that, head down to the pinned comment uh, in the description or, um, or the pinned comment or in the description. Click on that viral sweep link. Now, let's get into the first couple of stories and then we'll end talking about E3 because, uh, yeah, we have some news about that and then we need to talk about what that means for us. So first up, our first story comes from Dr. Sirkin Toto. Uh, he actually uh, works for Cotton Games out in Japan. He's an analyst, but also has some direct knowledge of certain things. And one thing he mentioned in a general piece at GameIndustry.biz where they talked about predictions and one of the predictions is that like next gen Nintendo's happening in 2024. We could talk about that. That feels more like a, a, a discussion point for a podcast. But for this video, we're going to focus on news. He did did mention that he is aware that Mario Kart 9 is in active development and will have a new twist. Now he doesn't tell us when we are going to get Mario Kart 9, like is it going to come to Switch this year, next year, is it a next gen game? That's not knowledge that he seems to have or is able to divulge, but he was able to confirm at least that hey, the game is in active development and will have a new twist. Now. Mario Kart typically has a new twist every single time anyways, be it from Double Dash or, you know, being able to do anti-gravity upside down stuff. So we'll have to see uh, what's in store this time around, but it does at least have me excited to know that, hey, look, we've speculated, we've heard rumors. Now we have someone in Japan who has contacts at Nintendo that can be like, yeah, look, this thing's being made, but that's all I'm telling you. Um, and I think Nintendo's probably okay with being like, yeah, you can tell people that, you know, the game is being made. I mean, duh, it's going to exist. It's just, what the hell is it? What is the twist? Is it that it's Nintendo Kart? I don't know. That's speculation. Now, it's a really small story, but I think an important one. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus and Project Triangle Strategy actually both got raided by the ESRB today. Now, those... It, the fact that it got rated isn't that big of a deal. We already have launch dates for both of them, one in March, one on January 28th. But it's notable because Kirby and the Forgotten Land got rated by the ESRB last year. And we've been speculating that it's going to be the March game. But with these ones getting rated by the ESRB, I think this kind of just locks up Nintendo's big three games to kick off 2022 and Pokemon Legends Arceus, Project Triangle Strategy, and Kirby and the Forgotten Land. The question obviously is Kirby and the Forgotten Land landing in February. Is it going to be a March game? We already had a leak from Nintendo's own eShop telling us that Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp is going to be their April game. So we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out and I'm sure we're going to get a Nintendo Direct at some point that's going to clarify all of this. But still, uh, yeah, the fact that they got rated by the ESRB obviously just kind of lets credence to these are going to be the opening three games for exclusive for Nintendo Switch uh, and you know it's not a bad way to start the year you got a brand new new idea Pokemon you got Kirby going you know first time full 3d potentially open world Kirby and then obviously another amazing RPG strategy game coming from Square so yeah that's obviously a great way to kick out 2022 at least it has me excited because I'm actually gonna be playing all three of these games and we're giving away three copies of the one this month so you know how that all lines up now this last story is one that actually broke yesterday, and I was going to make a video on it, but I wanted to sit on this for a day. E3, uh, the ESA has announced that E3 will not be in person this year. There will be no in-person event uh, due to the obviously the Om Omicron breakout and things being sort of getting locked down uh, in California. In fact, the Super Bowl might be getting moved out of California. And there's a whole bunch of things happening that the ESA just says, look, you know, we have to start booking all this stuff now. We have to, we have to book the venue. We have to get exhibitors in. And they're just like, look, it's not happening in person this year. Uh, and they will get, you know, in contact with everybody else um, you know, or let us know future plans for this year. Uh, they didn't confirm there would be a digital event like last year, but they didn't say there wouldn't be either. They just kind of said, look, we're not doing it in person this year and we'll release further details uh, down the line. So it does sound like there probably will be another event of some type. I obviously hope they learn from last year's event, which was a bit of a snooze fest, um, and that maybe they don't need four days for E3. Maybe they can condense it at least down to three days. Uh, and yeah, if, as long as you have Microsoft, Nintendo, Ubisoft, and Square there, it's going to be worth doing something. Uh, but are they going to partner up with Summer Game Fest? That's also something that I think they probably should con uh, consider doing, considering that Jeff Keighley did a really good job with Summer Game Fest, and that sort of became what we wanted E3 to be 
just with Microsoft and Nintendo in it instead of them being at E3. So I hope they all work together. If they don't, it doesn't really matter because um, we're going to get those events anyways. But well, here's what I will say. This does obviously confirm a couple of things. So we do know Summer Game Fest, no matter what, is coming back this June. And I presume ESA is going to have an E3 because they're not going to want Summer Game Fest to take all the glory. So here's what's really cool about this for you guys. Last year, we did something unprecedented. We decided on a whim about six weeks before E3 happened that we are going to do a special event at E3 last year. We gave away over $3,000 worth of items. We had sponsors. We, you know, that's where we got like, see this, see this, this thing, this even, we, we got sponsored for a computer chair for like the first time ever. I, I, it's weird, right? Like we were able to do amazing things last year. We had gaming competitions and contests and announcements. And we ended up reaching over 20,000 people during E3 and arguably put on a better show than E3 themselves. Now, yes, we live reacted to everything. And we did have one moment that really, really sucked when our stream crashed right as Nintendo section was happening. We're gonna have some things in place this year to ensure we don't get a crash like that again this year. Um, some backup streams and backup things happening uh, because yeah, we obviously don't wanna cut out right during a major event like that that we've been waiting four days for. But I will say uh, that what this does mean is I can officially announce our E3 show is coming back in 2022. I told you guys, if E3 was in person, there was gonna be a decision to be made this year because we like to go to E3 in person because then we get to go hands-on with the games and actually give you impressions that we can't give you without going. Plus there's obviously networking and all of that. Uh, but because E3 is not in person and E3 is back to being this event that is happening digitally, uh, yes, we're gonna be bringing back our E3 show and you guys know we're gonna be going bigger and better than last year. We learned a lot of lessons from last year, by the way. Uh, a lot of things like, hey, you know, how do we manage the shipping of these items? Do we really want to have all the physical items in house? There's going to be some changes with the giveaways that happen. We're still going to be having a ton of them. In fact, I plan to double up the amount of giveaways we did. So you guys remember last year, you know, I said over 3,000, you know, 200 plus winners. Yeah, we're going to be doubling that this year. We're going to have um, yeah, at least value, money value wise. I can't guarantee we're going to be doubling up the amount of total prizes, but yeah, let's just say there will be not just like a switch given away. There will be a pile of things being given away um, that might involve some things that have the number five in them and other things that, that, that go X and, 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 and I guess the O, the, you know, that the, the tends to be white and has a nice screen. Yeah, well, let's just say we might be giving away a whole pile of those um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're actually reaching out to partners right now and obviously setting aside money every single month on the channel uh, for that. Now, there's been some ideas floated around in my household about how we're going to do E3 already uh, because we've already decided on a couple of things for this show beyond obviously the massive giveaways and how we're going to handle all of that. One is we're going to have more guests this year. We're actually starting to book guests right now. In fact, our very first guest has already been booked for the show. Um, we're going to have more of our own segments. You guys remember E3 did their own little segments of people talking and nobody cared. Well, I'm going to make sure we get in guests that people care about, be it game developers or actual other YouTube content creators like me that are in my same space so you guys can have in-depth conversations. We brought on some people you guys didn't even know last time to talk about Xbox, and that ended up being one of the best segments and some people's favorite segments of the entire show. So yeah, we are trying to partner with and bring in as many guests as we can. Obviously this involves a lot of work and a lot of planning. And yeah, we're gonna make that happen for you guys because we wanna put on an even bigger and better show. Uh, we're also including Summer Game Fest in our show this year. We are not gonna set that aside as like, oh, we're not really doing that, this is an E3 only show. No, this is going to be a Summer Game Fest and E3 show. And what we might use Summer Game Fest and E3 to advertise the show, we're gonna come up with our own unique name for this event for us. Um, so we're not so reliant on their branding, although their branding will be present. So this set is amazing, and we've been using this set now for six or seven months. Uh, but what I can say is we are actually looking into building an entirely brand new set. Obviously, the set will be used outside of E3. Uh, but yeah, we are looking to build a bigger, better, even more practical and cooler looking set for you guys. Um, let's just say like this thing might be out of here. Uh, we got 
So we got some plans in the works anyways, uh, and some other special events happening. One thing I could tell you as an example, we're bringing in an F-Zero style death wheel that's going to be spun occasionally during the live stream to punish me and Eric. Um, it's going to be a good time for that. Obviously, Eric is already committed to be part of this show as well. Um, he already knows what's up. He's like, kind of disappointed it's not in person because we always look forward to that event every year, traveling out to LA. We're usually there for 10 days. That's right. We are in LA for a long time, and it's a lot of work. But uh, this is a lot of work as well. We also obviously want to reach out to the community. You guys are the ones that got to watch our E3 show last year. And what we always want is feedback for you. So down in the description in the pinned comment is going to be a sort of feedback survey on ideas we could use in our next E3 show slash Summer Game Fest show in 2022. Yes, giveaways are back for sure. Yes, special guests are back for sure. Yes, special tournaments and events are going to be happening during it. Smash Bros. Ultimate and Mario Kart and and so much more are going to be part of this event as we bring the community together. Mario Party Superstars, probably part of that as well. But we're going to be doing this in a way that's bigger and better. We want to go to the next level. So part of going to the next level is obviously taking your honest feedback in and implementing it in this new show. Because really up to this point, I kind of hoped we weren't going to be doing this this year because not only is it a lot of work and not only does it put my house in disarray, it also... Um, I don't get to go hands on with games and that sucks. Damn it. <laughs> but that's all right. Cause we're going to react together and we have one plan um, that I, I'm going to at least tease you on, but I can't guarantee it's going to happen. We have been reaching out. We might be having our own game reveals on our show this year. I can't tell you who it's from, what the studios are, that's all being worked out, but we are actually in talks right now to have people, instead of revealing games at E3, instead of revealing games at Summer Game Fest, doing it right here while we're covering those events. I said we are going to do it bigger and better than last year. Wasn't kidding. Now we're still formulating all the plans and getting all the preliminaries out of the way. Obviously, we're gonna have to order up some different art assets and a whole bunch of different things, get the merch going ahead of time, um, and maybe even... Maybe to give people an ability to purchase a pass to our show. The show is going to be free, by the way, guys. You guys can obviously all attend. Um, I'm really looking forward to this year. If you want to actually support the show directly, if you want to be someone that says, hey, you know what? We really want to, we want to support you being able to give away more during the show. We want to support the budget that's going to be going towards building out the new set. We want to just support your ability to maybe bring in a third host during the show. We want to do everything we can to make this event Again, the premier destination during E3 and Summer Game Fest. Well, you can do so. No pressure. Just hit the join button on the channel and become a member. All the money from memberships from here all the way through E3 are going to be dedicated to this show, to our giveaways, uh, and to building out the set and anything other crazy ideas we come up with, including if we have to spend money to get special guests to come on that we think are going to make this even better. You guys matter to me. You really do. This show matters to me. And I didn't even think we could pull it off last year. And look at how incredible that show turned out. You don't believe me? Links to that down in the description. Go back and watch it if you want. 12 plus hour live streams. Insane. We're doing it again. This time, it's probably going to be a week straight. Are you ready? I don't know if I am. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you in the next video.